Merry Christmas, everyone. Forrest here with Fofo Astro. I hope you had a great holiday day, whatever it is you celebrate. We celebrate Christmas, and it was a good day of just fun being with family. So hopefully you had a good day as well. Uh, what I wanted to do today is give you guys a little update on the observatory. It's been a few months, and uh, actually quite a bit has changed. Um, as you guys know, going into the fall, this is the first year that I've been running the observatory purely off solar, um, and also the first year that I've been running the observatory fully remote. And quite a bit's changed. Um, you saw, probably watched the video. If you haven't, you can go back and watch it where I doubled the battery capacity. I was running into issues with not enough battery power, doubled the battery capacity. Uh, and with our cloudy days in Missoula, for those of you who don't know, it's cloudy pretty much like six days a week, at least in the winter. And with all that cloudiness in our days, my solar panels just have not been able to get enough power. So I doubled the solar panels. I, I added another, another 320 watt panel. So I have now 600 watts of power and that still wasn't enough. So I wanna give you guys a little update on the observatory, walk you around, show you what's new, and hopefully you can learn from some of my mistakes that I've made in the past few months uh, since I've uploaded my last video. So let's go ahead and dive in, woo. All right, so the first change has to do with my main control uh, and fuse box panel here. So what I've done is I've actually added some uh, dedicated fuses for different things. But the big thing was I've added this. So this is actually a relay box. Um, that I built myself and inside are four relays that are all web controlled and so I have the ability my Arduino which we'll talk about in a minute controls these different relays and gives me the ability to power on and off four of my devices remotely the reason that I needed that was I have a few things like my main router my NUC and my skyroof my computer uh, and my mount that draw quite a bit of power even when they're not on or not being used and that was drawing me down on cloudy days when the sun wasn't out. I would actually lose so much power during the day that I wouldn't have enough, uh, and it was actually damaging my batteries. So this is an ability for me to turn this off. This is connected basically in line with a few of these uh, different circuits. It also has a voltage measurement circuit in it, which runs out right here and goes down to the batteries and measures the voltage of the batteries at all times. Now, this whole box is controlled or uh, basically is sent its control wires through some Cat5 Ethernet, which runs down and actually up into this, which is an Arduino. So this Arduino is plugged in via Ethernet to my main network switch, and then also by via USB into the NUC. And that does a couple really important things. For one, like I said, it creates its own web server on the network and allows me to power cycle individual circuits, four of these circuits, on and off from my house or from within the network, if I'm VPNing in or if I'm here. So that's really cool. <clears throat> it also allows me to measure the voltage of the battery pack via that voltage measurement circuit. So I kind of have a constant web server that I can access and check that information. The reason it's plugged into the NUC is one, for power, but two, because I want to be able to um, basically take the information that this provides, the voltage of the battery, and have it issue a safe or unsafe command so that when I'm running Sequence Generator Pro, the ASCOM driver can look and can tell whether the battery voltage is too low to continue. And that was one of the big things was I wanted it so that when my battery voltage, and we can go through that right here and see, when my battery voltage, which right now is at 13.7 volts, at night when it drops below 11.8, I want it to issue a command to the NUC that it's no longer safe to continue observing. And the reason that we do that is so that it doesn't damage the batteries. The NUC will see that it's unsafe, will issue the roof command to close, and will stop the observing session. And that was really important for me. So basically what that is, is it's some custom Arduino code that I wrote that runs, checks the voltage every 60 seconds, and depending on what the voltage is, it tells the NUC whether it's safe or not safe to continue observing. <clears throat> Now, a couple of other changes that take place in here are, let me go ahead and hit the lights. For one, I needed a way to access that web server anytime, regardless of the current power state of the situation. So the way that I have all of this networked is this main router gets its power from my, or not its power, but its signal from my parents' router in their house. And so 
this is only on the internet when it's connected to their router in their house. And that's a problem because if this ever loses power, I can't connect to anything in the entire observatory. So this now I rewired today with its own dedicated power circuit that's connected to its own fuse. And there's no way to turn that off remotely. And the reason that that's important is all of my different server, web server control servers are connected to this device. And if this was ever to lose power, I wouldn't be able to turn anything on or off, which is an issue. So this will always be on unless I manually come out here and turn it off. So that worked really nicely. Also, everything on the telescope is the same. I've had a few nights of it working perfectly. Everything's still individually fused with that network relay box right there. So that all works perfectly. The only other change that's happened in here is now, <clears throat> given the winter time, I'm actually running the NUC and the roof motor off of the power from my parents' house. So I have an extension cord coming in, this yellow cord actually comes in from their house, it runs over the yard, and it's connected to the AC in of this inverter. So this inverter actually isn't inverting, it's actually just passing power through from that extension cord over to these devices. And that's just simply because the Missoula winter <laughs> was pretty unforgiving when it came to clear nights. Like you guys can see it's super cloudy right now. Actually, it's kind of clear. It's the first blue sky we've seen in a while. Um, but that was one of those problems that we've run into. So with all that said, I want to kind of break down the important points from all of this. I'd say the number one thing that I've learned in the past few months is you absolutely need a way to remotely power cycle every single device in your system. Um, I think that that's one of the biggest things that I kind of overlooked when I was planning the observatory. Um, well, not planning the observatory, planning the remote operation of the observatory is the ability to power cycle everything. And that's one of those things that I think uh, would have saved me a lot of time is if I had just went into it knowing that I needed some web relay controllers for more devices, that would have saved a lot of time. The other thing to think about is the order of shutdown. Um, you really wanna make sure that there's always a way to access those relay controllers in your observatory without having to worry about the thing that allows you to access them being shut down. What I mean by that is that main router that's in there, that router is connected to the internet. That's my direct connection to the internet. Well, if that gets powered down, I can't access anything in here. It's completely dark, my access to this place, because all of the internet, all of the remote access comes through that device. So like I said today, I actually hardwired that device with its own dedicated circuit directly to the batteries. So that if everything else fails, I've still got access to that, which means I have network access to the other devices in my system. And I think that that's a pretty important thing to think about. The other thing that I've learned in the past few months is that uh, winter is really unforgiving when it comes to daylight. Even with two 300 watt solar panels, I'm still only pulling in about 10 amps, seven amps, five amps on a cloudy day. In fact, sometimes it's not even enough to get above what my NUC pulls on idle, what the computer's pulling on idle. So it's definitely something to consider is if you are trying to go full-time solar, you need like four times as many panels as you think you're gonna need. Um, I never ran into this because I never had stuff running all the time. Like I used to run my observatory solar but it was one night a week and, and when I wasn't shooting, everything was completely off. So there was no draw on the batteries on idle, which was really important. So hopefully you guys learned something from this. I know it's a little bit of a weird update video, but uh, I know for me, when I was trying to design my remote observatory, if I had had someone who had done it and chronicled it like this, it would have been really helpful. Um, so definitely leave questions down in the comment section. I'm happy to answer them more long form. Um, also, if you guys have anything specific that you want a video made on, let me know. Um, I'd love to hear it. I'd love a like if you like the video. If you want to subscribe, definitely consider doing that. We're going to do a lot of videos like this, and I will catch you guys in the next one.